Hey everyone, Budget Nerd here with a long time requested video. If you haven't seen my do it yourself budget home network video, the link is in the description. Go check it out. I talk about my network and show a little of how I set it up on the cheap. Some of the questions I frequently get are how do I hook everything up? What does each thing do? What's the point of this network? What part gives me the Wi Fi access? Or how does this setup help me share my internet? So let's go over the basics of the whole setup. Here comes a very nerdy home networking 101. In this video, you'll just see the basics. If you already understand the basics, then comment if I missed something. If you want to skip to a specific part, here's the breakdown. Uh, these are also in the description. So first off, let's talk about IP addresses. An IP address, or internet protocol address, is given to each and every computer on a network. Doesn't matter if that's your home network, or your internet service provider, or ISP's network that you pay to be a part of, it gets an IP address. The IP address is the identity of your computer on the network, and without it, devices on the network won't know where to send their data. I like to use the analogy of snail mail. Each house on a street will need its own address, or the mailman won't know where to deliver your bills. The most basic of ways to connect to a network would be to pay an ISP for access to their network, and with it, access to the internet. You can't get free internet, really, unless you steal your neighbor's Wi-Fi, and I don't really recommend that. You'll need to pay an ISP for access. If you're on a tight budget, call them up and ask about any cheaper plans they have. Lots of times they will have plans that they don't advertise. So they'll send you a modem to lease, or you can purchase your own. What's a modem, you ask? A simple way to think of a modem is it will convert the signal coming from your ISP into something the PC can understand. In this instance, let's go with cable internet service as that's what I have and I can easily show that. Hooking it up is easy. Screw on the cable line to the modem, and then an ethernet cable into the back of the modem, and then the other side to your laptop. This is the most basic setup, even though it's not ideal nor recommended, more on that later. Your laptop will be assigned an IP address by the ISP, and it will now have an internet connection through the ethernet cable. Well, what if you have more than one computer or device? You could add a switch. A switch will allow you to add more ports to a network. To hook everything up this way, you'd plug in the ethernet cable into the modem, and then the other end to the switch. Now run an ethernet cable from a port on the switch to any of your devices. Now your devices are connected to the network through the switch. You should be able to share files and other things and share the internet connection, but as I mentioned, this setup is not ideal. Each of these devices will need their own IP address, remember, and your ISP may only give you so many. Some may only give you one, or two, maybe three. Once you exceed this number, whatever it is, those additional devices will not get an IP address and won't be able to communicate on the network. Also, all of these devices will be exposed on the public internet, which is a large security risk. The best way to share your internet connection between multiple devices is to add a router between your modem and your devices. Now, a router is a device that routes traffic between two different networks. The two different networks we would be connecting with this router would be the public network of your ISP and your now new private network on the other side of the router. Now, instead of everything being on the public network, aka the internet, you can have all of your devices behind the router on a private network, which is better for security. A router will also take care of handing out IP addresses to all of the devices you connect to it, and it will have plenty to give out. So you connect your modem to the WAN or internet port on the router, and then connect your devices to any of the LAN ports on the router. These ports are in essence a switch built into the router, if you want to think of it that way. If you need more ethernet ports than your router has, you can add a switch. This picture will show you how to connect up a switch to a router. Now we're missing one thing, right? 
All of our devices at this point have to be connected to the network with an Ethernet cable. Where's our Wi-Fi's at? To give wireless access to this network, you could add a wireless access point. You plug in your wireless access point into one of the LAN ports on the router or to a switch somewhere in the network, add power if your switch or router won't provide it, and after a tiny bit of configuring, you have wireless access. Now, if a modem and a router and a switch and an access point sounds somewhat overwhelming, then there's good news for you. Rather than have all of these separate devices, you can get them all in one unit. This is what I have. Most people call it a router, and that is correct, but it's a router switch access point combo, technically. It is a router that has LAN ports built in, which you could call the switch, with a built-in access point. You can even rent devices from your ISP that are modem, router, access point combo units. Everything you need in one unit. Leasing one of these combo units is usually the cheapest way to get started, but the rent can add up over the months. Plus, these uh, combo units from the ISPs are known for not having great private network speed and few options, and are oftentimes limited by your ISP. If you want the most out of your home network, you can get a modem and then a separate router access point combo unit, which will give you full control, better network speed, and more features. You can oftentimes find a cheap modem and a cheap router on Craigslist. Just make sure the modem you get is compatible and make sure the router will at least support the 802.11n standard or better. It will say on the box or is usually pretty easy to find in the specs. I put a few links in the description uh, for some decent budget routers if you're interested. Now that we know this, we can easily understand what each device is in my rack, in my closet, and what each one does. First, this is my modem, which is connected to the LAN internet port on my router. This is my router. It routes the traffic between my private network and the public network, letting me share my internet connection between all my devices. The router has a built-in access point, which gives my wireless devices access to my network and, in turn, the internet. This is my patch panel, which gives my permanent Ethernet cables running through my walls a place to terminate. We really didn't cover this in this video, but I do have a video about patch panels. Check it out if you want. Link is also in the description. This is just a large switch that is connected to my router, giving me many more Ethernet ports for my devices. I like to wire anything I can. And this last one is just a rack-mounted power strip. So my setup is a little over the top, it's true, but with any network of any size similar to this, you can share your internet connection, share files, movies, photos, and videos, share printers, remote into any PC from any other PC if the PC has software that supports that, even from outside your private network. You could add a network attached storage or an external hard drive to your router if it supports it and get network storage. So there, there's lots you can do with a network like this. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. If there's something you didn't understand or is there something you want me to elaborate on, ask in the comments.